I cannot deal with this woman being in public office again. Can we impeach her? Please. Uh, yeah, oh, God. sure. I feel I'm like they'd actually word. convict. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Keep It, Cricket Media's show about pop culture and politics and what happens when they smack into each other at an alarming speed. I'm your host, Ira Madison III, a television writer and Fallout Boy fan. I'm Louis Fertel. I'm a TV writer and Jane Fonda historian. And I'm Aida Osman. I'm a TV writer and alleged comedian. Let's get into it. My personal nemesis, <laughs> Sarah Huckabee Sanders, oh, who, is, who is running for governor of Arkansas, which, of course, I feel like there have been rumors about this um, governor bid for a while, ever since she left the position as White House press secretary. But to see her campaign video really just highlights how stupid this woman is and how manipulative and evil this woman is and just how she has glorified being pitiful at your job and turned it into a brand, right? Like, it starts out with her talking about how the radical left have taken over the government with socialism and how the governor is the last chance of defense for real Americans. So they need to help her become governor of Arkansas, I guess. You know, she talks about how she took on the media and I won. What did you <laughs> win? What? What did you, you win? Quit. You quit. You <laughs> quit. <laughs> 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 no one won during those press briefings. Maybe one of the most disturbing parts of her campaign video is it opens up with a story about how she and Trump visited the troops um, for the holidays once, and a young soldier came up to them and said, Mr. Trump, I re-enlisted in the Army because of you. And then he said to Sarah Huckabee, um, give them hell, you know, your job is so amazing and you're great at it. And she's like, well, oh, gee shucks, you know, like I'm just at a podium every day. You're the real person, you know, sacrificing themselves for America. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Is this a sweet story that a <laughs> young man was radicalized to join yeah. the military by a man who we all know did everything possible to avoid being in the military himself. Right. Pathetic. I, I mean, Sarah Huckabee <sighs> Sanders, I, I, it, it's just so cr Like, we watched Sean Spicer and then the Scaramucci guy, and then she appeared, and it was like... <laughs> It's like the idea that she was the successful version just because she looked the least ashamed of lying. I mean, that's all she did. That's that true. was her quote unquote triumph. It's that, that she has that the idea that she would have fans right now based on what? What did she ever say? What did she ever do? And of course, she's related to that other fucking Huckabee who literally is trying to be a talk show host now because these people are all secretly clowns. <laughs> yeah, and it's, that just reminds me like it was so refreshing to watch Jen Psaki come and actually speak and be a literate human being with opinions and understandings about the world. I'm just, it's, it's so refreshing. Fuck sake. I am actually enjoying um, Jen's um, John Lovett-esque stand-up routine, if I can mm -hmm. call it that, when she comes up and she's like, now guys, there are going to be times where you don't like me, but that's the <laughs> process. I'm the White House press secretary, but I'm here to respect the media, and we're going to be honest, and we're going to talk about Joe Biden's plans for America. Man, what a week. <laughs> I love her. I love her. <laughs> but getting back to this damn video, it is seven minutes long, and then it is intercut with scenes of her. She's walking through the cornfields with her dad, too, like, I guess, looking for crop circles. I <laughs> wish some aliens were there to snatch them up and take them back to wherever, uh, because I cannot deal with this woman being in public office again. Can we impeach her? Please. Uh, yeah, oh, God. sure. I feel I'm like they'd actually convict. <laughs> <laughs> if they won't convict Trump, they'd actually convict her. Because no one actually works. gives a fuck about her, right? Like, she was there to um, further the lies of the Trump administration. But at the end of the day, she's, you know, expendable. And, you know, it, it, I, I really hope that this is one of those first instances where it shows that, like, 
the association with Trump is toxic because mm-hmm. I'm sure mm-hmm. he's going to come out to, you know, support her in this governor bid. And I just want it to fucking fail spectacularly. I am hoping so myself. <sighs> she really is downright Trumpy in that it's, she's both a joke who is scary. It's just pathetic. Apparently, I'm the authority on Larry King here, which I kind of agree with. Um, R.I.P. Larry King, uh, a man who is always accidentally on your television, where, wherever you are. I feel like you, you have no choice but to have seen 25,000 Larry King interviews. But um, nevertheless, uh, the man died this week at the age of 87. And he, by the way, before we get to the interviews, one of my favorite things about Larry King is he's a very old-fashioned type of celebrity in that he's been married a trillion times, which I really miss. <laughs> when you can be married eight times, and yes. we're just like, what is wrong with you? What is your life like that Elizabeth you were getting Taylor married this back. many times? Yeah, right. Zsa, Zsa Gabor, these people yeah. where it's like, what the fuck? But the interesting thing about Larry King passing this week, as I like tried so hard to reflect on him, on his life and his career, is I realized I knew absolutely nothing about the man himself, like in his personal life, other than his partner's things that would make like gossip blogs. But I think if anything, that is the mark of a master interviewer or at least the most efficient interviewer that we've ever seen. Right. Well, what's interesting is, well, in, in reflecting on his interview career, I was surprised how few moments of like incisive questioning he gave us because his whole thing really was, if you ask a short enough question and put a camera on people, they will feel obligated to talk exactly. for a long time. Mm-hmm. No audience, very intimate, force them to be vulnerable. Well, right. it was I, also his thing to like not be prepared for interviews. Right. <laughs> Which, no, <laughs> again, it's like, is it a skill? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that just, you know, like he would amass the right people who would like have moments on camera. Uh, and you'd get sort of an iconic thing out of it. But Larry wasn't really going into this being like, let me know about who I'm interviewing. Let me have even read the book they're promoting, seen the right. movie they're promoting. It's just like, why did you make this? Yeah, and he <laughs> asks it with a confident enough way that it feels like a bold question. But in fact, yeah. it's just an uninformed one. Mm-hmm. It's like if RuPaul, RuPaul came on here and we're like, what's your thing? What do you do? Yeah. What's your, what are you about, Rue? <laughs> and lean in it, really inquisitively. It reminds me of one of my favorite interviews that Larry King did, and it is with Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, and my God. Is, he, and it he is, blew up the handle. It is years after Seinfeld, and he talks about Seinfeld being canceled. <laughs> and Jerry Seinfeld is like, the fuck are you talking about? I wasn't canceled. <laughs> Number one show on TV. Does that sound like canceled to you? No, Too it was brazen. like a downright. Hate a brazen white man. <laughs> it was like much. a downright. I don't want to say Trumpian response, but it was like a uh, 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 an offended P.T. Barnum like response. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm the king of all media. Don't you forget? I'm already here promoting B movie. I will not be disrespected anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is it was rooted in truth and like he's he's trying to make a joke but it's actually just true so you come off as a dick Jerry Seinfeld I'm sorry yeah right 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 well also what's weird is you would always want to turn to Larry King when he got like your favorite A-lister or something like occasionally mm-hmm. Madonna would drop in and it's not like he wouldn't get good interviews out of these people but it was always such a weird mashup because in a Barbara Waltersy like way, they don't. He doesn't really ask the hard question ever, mm. or the unusual question. So I'm not even really sure what we got out of him, other than the amusement of him as a character and the fact that people were sort of left to their own devices on this show and filled time well. This makes me really appreciate Kathy Griffin, who, when she would go on the show, would like fuck with him, and mm. he <laughs> was always so game because he's like, "This isn't serious," and I we confused him for a serious interviewer because he's on CNN and there's a vestige mm. of newsiness there but that was all proximity and I say this with affection for what he did because he has yeah. hours and hours of legendary content the Marlon Brando interview where he is off the chain and wearing uh, what I think are Birkenstocks and uh, kissing comes from, and just yeah, kissing oh, Marlon like who yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> the absolute we, insanity you're not getting that back um, yeah it's definitely the combination of him having been in the game for a minute and having had so many A-listers, particularly at a point where, um, 
there weren't as many places for celebrities to be interviewed, right? You know, totally. Now, now totally. there's so many places. I mean, they could come on Keep It or they could come on 60,000 mm. other podcasts. Right. <laughs> um, and they even have their own now, right? You know, so like mm-hmm. they love to interview each other. So this was definitely like an anomaly. It was the CNN connection as well. I think it was the suspenders too, you know? Oh, yeah. very, right. very, they're, 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 they meant Should've business. Um, <laughs> and right. so. Because of that, you know, I felt like people felt like they could break news there or something, like Oprah announcing that she was supporting Obama in um, 2007, Um, you know, him interviewing Putin twice. You know, I think that that just came from being in the game for a long time. And as much as I do, actually, um, I adore Larry, you know, I adore um, watching him. Uh, It was pure, innocent fun. (laughs) (laughs) Um, it was, you know, interesting revisiting this and being like, well, he wasn't really like the hottest of the interview game. Ira, Ira. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't. Um, but it was always fun to watch. You know, I was sitting and rewatching, um, a Robin Williams interview where Robin talked about rehab. Um, and that one was interesting only because, you know, like, Robin is giving this heartfelt um, response about uh, rehab, you know, and, like, almost dying and um, stuff like that while also being really funny. And it really just made me miss Robin Williams a lot. Right, um, yeah. And I think what Larry's real strength was was that even if he wasn't that prepared for the interviews, he was a person who was curious about the people that he was interviewing. He so could he be at curious least about just about anybody. Yeah. He could yeah. find mm-hmm. something to be curious about. Um, I mean, and if you, I'm sure the listeners of this podcast would be familiar with these two instances, but you've got to look up the Debbie Reynolds interview where she does a dead-on impersonation of Meryl Streep. Never <laughs> not funny. I laugh every time. And Carrie Fisher, who gives mm-hmm. an incredible, uh, she's via satellite in the interview. I think this is around the time of uh, Postcards from the Edge of the Movie, I think, 1990 or so. Uh, she gives a response about men that is just dead funny and, and very specific to uh, Carrie Fisher. Uh-huh. First of all, I, I don't think of men as people. And, uh, no. <laughs> uh, and uh, I hope they are intimidated by me, yes. So if you're looking to reappreciate the, the strangest mother-daughter combo of all time, I recommend looking at Larry King's interviews. Also specifically, re-watch, I rewatched the Tyler, the Creator interview with with Larry King, and if you just want to watch two different types of stoicism <laughs> and irreverence meet at a crossroads that have no business being in the same room, it is a very entertaining interview. And then, of course, if you know for my true crime girls stand up, he did interview um, Mark David Chapman, who is the <laughs> assassinator for John London. John Lennon. Oh God, John Legend. Chrissy Teigen, don't come for me. <laughs> <laughs> she will. She will. She will. She the will. The president. Find me. The president follows her now on Twitter, oh, so no. um, <laughs> she does have access to get you killed. Now you've got me craving interviews between two stoic people. Like, what if Tommy Lee Jones and Lakeith Stanfield just, you know, <laughs> just look at each other, each other sideways for an hour? Yeah. <laughs> the two interviews that I want to suggest people go see. Um, these are constant highlights um, at parties uh, if you're a gay man. Uh, mm-hmm. um, the interview with Liza Minnelli. Oh, God. <laughs> she is cracking up at every single moment in this interview. And then, of course, the maybe all-time favorite Larry King interview of mine is after Hurricane Katrina, when he is interviewing Celine oh my Dion. God. How did I not bring that up? Oh when he is God. interviewing Celine Dion and asks her to sing a song for the hurricane victims. And she's like, I don't want to sing a song, Larry. <laughs> and then she sings a song perfectly. And by the way, she has been weeping throughout the interview. Yes. I mean, gay men on the internet have pantomimed this interview where she's wiping tears in 11 different directions. And... She's so she's so sincere. It's like you 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 can't make Celine Dion up. She's just an exotic bird and also like full of emotions and <laughs> constantly forty two. From the minute she was born, she was forty two to now when she's forty two. The moral of the story is pair a celebrity with an old interviewer who doesn't give a fuck, and you will <laughs> create magic. 
<laughs> you, you just have to look like you belong in a barber shop in the 30s, and people will say anything to you. He's got the horse right here. <laughs> <laughs>